and welcome to the Dungeon Defenders Glitter Helm Leveling Guide. This is the second fastest way how to level in this game, but the most easy to get used to. To get the most effect out of this, you're going to want to turn on Insane and Hardcore Mode. Right now I'll just be showing you how much experience you can get, and then after that I will show you how to build the map. So right now I'm just going to pick up a couple gems, get this rolling, because this one is on Insane, and on Insane you are timed, so you should start first start out by trying to do this on hard mode when you're not actually timed. So right now I'm going to make a new character so you guys can see exactly how much experience you can get from doing this. Brand new character, level zero, and let's get this rolling. I'm just going to go from wave to wave, skipping the waves, and then afterwards I will show you exactly what I do to do this. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it on a squire, but before I had a squire, I was doing this on an apprentice just fine. If this is your first character, just check online in the evenings, and there's usually a few people running through this, and it takes you about, if you want to get to level 70, it takes you about, I don't know, 2 to 3, and they don't take very long, it's anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, and it works out really great. Once you hit level 74, and you have decent stats, you can easily do this by yourself. So I'm just skipping through the rounds to show you how much experience you get after each round. Throughout this whole Glitter Helm run, I get to level 60, and it works out really great for me. I think the whole round took me about 10 minutes. Now, while you're watching this, I am going to say that when I receive 3,000 subscribers, I'm going to start giving away some free downloadable content. Each one costs anywhere from 2 to $12, and I'll be giving them out free random to my subscribers. So feel free to subscribe and check out any new videos I come out with, and just be prepared to get some free prizes. As I mentioned before, this is the second fastest way to gain levels. The fastest way is a new DLC called City in the Mist, insane and on hardcore. But this is a six-person map and it is very difficult. It takes finesse and a lot more stats and much more repair. I like Glitter Helm because once you get it on, once you get on your low-level character you never need to get back on your main builder which is the greatest part about it as you can see I'm literally just sitting on my character gaining levels now this is the last round I just got the item from it and the stats that I'm throwing in are just random right now because it only costs a hundred thousand to change it and each round of glitter helm you get anywhere from a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand mana which is just great money for for a new character <clears throat> now I'm gonna show you the stats needed to actually get this going not exactly needed but what I recommend to get this going and I'm gonna check out an item and then show you the stats. Now tower health you want about 300 which isn't too much. Tower damage you want at 500. This is pretty much necessary to take out the ogres. Tower attack rate is 200. It's pretty low. And then tower range to take out the air you're gonna want 300. Now these are the recommended stats. If you don't have these I would try it out on hard first before you actually try it out. If you've got more than that that just means less repairing and upgrading than you have to do. Now I'm going to show you how to do the build. This I'm showing you on hard mode just so that I'm not timed, but on insane you will be timed. The first thing to do I'm showing you, you go up into the north area and you're going to set this tower right on the bridge. It's going to be aiming southeast and it's going to work out really great because it's going to kill the air that's going to come up for this north crystal. Now you're going to grab these chests over here. I'm kind of skipping through the chests a little bit. You'll know where they are, and especially try this out on hard first again so you're not timed and you can go through and place all your towers. And in this first top area, I just set two harpoon towers right now with my stats. I don't need the two, but the two is just really nice to have out there for the first few enemies. And then after this, I'm going to skip down to this little cave area. It's right in between the middle crystal and the right crystal. To start out, you just need a little harpoon tower right in this doorway and aiming into the spawn area. This will kill anything that goes in the spawn area, anything that comes towards the doorway, and anything that goes down the little ramp. Now going farther to the right crystal, you're going to grab these chests. I'm going to skip over to the other chest. And it's pretty easy because all you need to do is add two cannonball towers aiming down. You can do different variants if you want to do harpoon towers. I just prefer the, the cannonball towers for this specific area. Now I'm going to skip over back to the middle area, and for the stairs that are going upward, you can place a harpoon tower, just to make sure nothing gets out, and for the stairs that are facing downward, I prefer to do two cannibal towers as well, just keeps the overflow from getting too much. Then grab these chests over here, 
Now you're going to want to place, these are the tricky ones, you can pause if necessary, you want to place these harpoon towers outward, and if you get the area just right, it will take out all the air that comes into this area, and you won't even need to worry about them after that. And then you're going to have 40 left in the first round, and you're going to place one bouncing blocker just in front of this. Now what I do is I, I run the first round on my builder so I can get enough mana to do whatever I want to. So if you want, I would just suggest starting up the round, which I'll show you right now. I start up the round, and I go and just kill whatever's spawning over here. Again, this one's on hard mode at the moment, so it's, it's easy to get by, but you should be able to do this on insane if you're on your highest level character. It's pretty simple. Grab a little bit of mana, place one harpoon tower down here, and you can go run around and start placing your other towers. Now, I showed you this after the round, so there's not going to be much clutter of enemies, but you go down to where you place the two cannonball towers, you're going to place a bouncing blockade, and then you're going to place either another cannonball tower, or I like doing a harpoon tower. Now you're going to go down to where you place this one, and just a simple bouncing blockade could work. If you're on lower tower stats, you might want to place a few more things over there, because ogres do spawn. And then over here, just another bouncing ball tower, and then you can either do a bouncing blockade down here, or you can either do a slice and dice. I prefer the slice and dice because I think they're fun. Down by the far left crystal, you're going to want to place one harpoon tower facing towards it, just in case of an air or a warrior jumps by, and then one facing outwards, just in case if anything starts walking down below your towers. Now back up at the top area, what you're going to want to do is just place two bouncing blockades. This is the easiest way to do it, just in front of your towers for if warriors just jump by, these will kill the warriors before they do any major damage to your towers. And a harpoon tower right behind. And then going back to the bottom left area, after you've got extra, your extra mana, I just like throwing an extra harpoon tower down here, and you can use the rest of your defense units if you want to. Now if you like and you've got a monk, what you can do is you can actually place some, you can place a power drain aura right here because the ogres are going to come out from this area and they are going to attack your things. You can press the mine or the uh, subtract key to lower the size of your aura so that you can make sure that you can spawn it if you have too much range on your towers. And then over here you can place an ensnare aura to keep the uh, warriors from just toppling over all of your towers. Over at the bottom left area, you can also place another Ensnare Aura just to slow them down while your towers are shooting at them. If you don't have a monk and instead you have a Huntress or a Ranger, you can do uh, Gas Traps instead, which work out really nicely. I put a few Gas Traps, or I put a Gas Trap up here and a Detonate Trap just to clear off the waves. You don't have to do this. Again, you can do this just with a Squire if you want to, or if you only have a Tower Build Apprentice, you can do this. The other classes are a little bit more sketchy. I've seen it done once on the Huntress, but then they had to watch the air.